Are you hooking up with women here? Uh, I haven't. I, I've gone on a few dates uh, when I was. Are in, you on Bumble? No, I'm not on, on the Bumble. I'm not on the Bumble. I heard about the Bumble recently. I didn't know that about the Bumble, but yeah, yeah, the yeah, Bumble. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear about it. I just heard about it recently. But uh, I have a couple of friends here who date, and they date on Bumble. I do not date on Bumble. I don't do online apps. But okay. how do you meet the people? So you said you've you've dated yeah, here uh -huh. since you've been here in Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania. You're just kind of dating. A, uh, I, you know, I've done a little bit of dating, uh, you know. So is it like you go to a bar or like meet somebody and then like, hey, can I take you out on a date next time? Uh, <laughs> so how do I work my magic? <laughs> run, no, some, uh, run some day. Uh, right? Uh, no, 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 it's just, um, honestly, I just, you know, it's not my, it's not my, 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 my goal when I when I get out I'm just I'm here to explore I'm here you to see different fun. things yeah and if I come across a good energy or whatnot like that then it's like uh you know let's hang let's hang out again okay. you know well I'm mainly asking to see if you use dating apps because I know a lot of people come here yeah and hop on the apps to like find the girls <laughs> local girl yeah. um I, I have some some friends that that, that utilize the uh, Bumble and also the Tinder. And they, yeah, and so, and so, I hope that those, you know, you, you can you can meet people out here with, but um, being being a man out here, being a, a black man out here, and coming from the states, you know, from the states, I, I realized that I was on on defense a lot uh, when I first got out here. Um, you know, brothers would smile at me, and you know, and, and want to you know shake my hand, and and, and it just you know, and, and every aren't they kind of touchy? Touchy, 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 touchy. Yeah. Here and he was like, Why does niggas keep yeah, touching yeah, me? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that was the first thing. And I was like, Yeah, hold up, let me kind of, you know what I'm saying? And, and seeing other, you know, you're not used to brothers just, you know, we do the what's up, whatever, like that. You know, <laughs> a little but, but to see somebody smile at you and all that, it's like, Hold up, what? are you trying to rob me? Or, or he might be on some, you know, whatever it might be. <laughs> and I'm like, Nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't in that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, but after after being here a couple of days and real and realizing that you know that's how they greet you and people are happy to see you and it's very endearing you know for brothers it's to genuine do that. it's genuine you know yeah. it, you know it's not no kind of whatever and you know not against whatever but it just you no know no funny business yeah yeah it's just all you know it's all real love and um that it, it had to be that's when i had to self reflect and be like okay you know this conditioning that the state has done to me where i have to be defensive or have to um, Second guess, yeah, people's yeah, intentions. Yeah, like, 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 I shouldn't have to, like, like, I shouldn't, I should be able like, to you're hardened to affection yeah. from other black men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a whoa, a very uncomfortable. Yeah, setting. yeah, yeah. Aww. And so that was, I guess, that was that would be the most profound, um, most profound um, reflection, reflection, self reflection, self reflection that, I, that I've, I've, I've come yeah. across. Hello, you guys. I have found another American teacher who dipped and moved, well, is moving, right? Correct, correct. Moving to Africa. Um, he's been all over. Honestly, you've been way more many places than I have, for sure. I've only been to Ghana and Kenya. Uh -huh. So we have a Black Expats in Kenya group um, that started off as a Facebook group and then transferred into like a WhatsApp group or what, what so have you. So he was actually supposed to be here. I had a Black Thanksgiving like African-American Thanksgiving, because obviously they do not celebrate Thanksgiving in Kenya, right? So I was just like, you know, sis wants some mac and cheese, like sis wants some mac and potatoes, like let's get it together. So I decided to host all the black expats in Kenya and um, invited them to my house and you were supposed to come, but what happened? Yeah, um, I was supposed to come uh, initially. I was, I was uh, planning to come straight to Nairobi, um, but, Got to the airport. When I got there, they wouldn't let me board. Um, they said that I didn't have an e-visa. Normally, uh, the last time I came to Kenya, uh, I, I got my visa on arrival. It wasn't How issue. many years ago was that, though? Uh, this was 2019. That's the okay. last time I came was 2019. Dang, so Kenya has leveled up. No more, none of that. None yeah. of that. And not no right board. now, at least. Not right now, at least. And so they um, they wouldn't let me board. Uh, and then, so I said, uh, my plan was, okay, well, I'll go ahead and, and fly for it right now online. And... I can just fly out a little bit later. They said no. Um, it was the weekend. You wouldn't. It wouldn't get approval for the visa until uh, a weekday. So it would take maybe two days, something like that, two or three days. Uh, I already had plans of going to Rwanda. Once I got here for a while, I wanted to check it out. Check out. I heard so many good things about Rwanda as far as how clean they were and uh, different opportunities out there as well. As far as them being more inviting to uh, 
to expats. I have a teacher friend who teaches at an international school in Rwanda. Oh, do you? Shout out to you, girl. Emily. Uh, hey, it's a beautiful place. And yeah, so, she uh, loves it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did too. Uh, so, so that's what caused me. Uh, I just changed plans. Um, so the next day I just flew out to Rwanda. Flew out there. I knew that once I got there, it wouldn't be an issue to catch a bus and, and get to Kenya. And so I flew out to Rwanda, had a friend out there who, um, who housed me for a little bit. I was there for about maybe a week, week and a half. Um, beautiful country, beautiful country, very organized. Like I said, super clean, uh, met some great people out there. Um, what do you, now that you spend time in Kenya, which do you prefer, Kenya or Rwanda? You know, Kenya is, is a lot bigger. It, hey, I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Pisces. And so, I'm a cancer. Are you? Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, you're a lover boy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sensitive. <laughs> I think this is a safe space. This is a safe space. Oh, uh, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, you're a little sensitive king. Uh, well, you, you know, I'm, um, I'm aware. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Emotionally. And emotionally aware. intelligent. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, I'm emotionally aware. And, uh, I like that. And I pick up things, I pick up energies easily. And so, um, and so you know that, that's why but uh being a, a pisces i guess i just enjoy being around water i like that uh i like that coastal life so it, even though rwanda was was amazing i just felt like i was missing out because i knew that once mm. i got here it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too difficult to get to the coast yeah rwanda's landlocked right yeah, is it yeah. on lake victoria exactly it, it is yeah it, it is. is it is it is but uh excuse me but then compared to having that that beach and um so let's stop. Okay. You were teaching in Texas. Mm -hmm. What made you like, I'm over it? Um, I guess it was like two, I guess when um, the pandemic, uh, whatever uh, occurred, we, we began teaching it from home. For at least that second semester of 2020, I think. Of 2020, I began teaching at home a bit. Um, the most ghetto time of my life. <laughs> it, it was like a sharp, transition yeah it was like it was literally like one day you're teaching at school yeah. and the next you're on virtual and you're never going back to the school <laughs> exactly it was um it was spring break when we left uh, it was march and so we, we left for spring break and then we never returned that year we returned um, online and it was my first time having to utilize um the different platforms so i guess maybe um google meets or zoom whatever it was so i just got thrown in that and started uh utilizing that that platform doing different things online um the campus I was at, it was um, it wasn't a lot of communication as far as was, what was going on on campus. So we had children being sick and things like that. But um, the, the the administration uh, thought it, it wasn't necessary to, to to notify other parents and, and other families who were in the classroom. And so it just it just was an issue that just kept going on. You know, just kept going on. Um, yeah, I just got a little deterred with everything going on at the district, and I decided to do something different. Just turned off? Yeah, it just, it just wasn't for So me. what was, like, the process? You were just like, I'm going to go look for a job there, or did you start looking for a job in Texas? Yeah, so uh, once I left, um, I mean, I've always, I've been training. I'm a kinesiology major, and so I've been uh, fitness training since uh, my junior year of college. And so that kind of, I took a, took a short break from teaching, and uh, yeah, it's not like it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. That was a long time ago. But I, <laughs> all right, it's now. all right. It's all right. <laughs> but um, so I um, so I just my fallback has always been uh, fitness fitness training. I've always done personal training on the side, so that kind of secured my income for a while. While I took a break for a few for a few months. Um, after that point, I, I miss teaching. I miss uh, being with my students. Um, and so I, I began looking online for different online opportunities to teach. Um, found some different contract roles and some different positions. So I began uh, teaching online. Uh, I wasn't able to do special education, but I, I'm certified, you know, uh, early childhood through eighth grade. And so. So why Africa? Why Africa? Um, I guess Africa is something I've always been curious about. And so. Uh, it, it took a while to get here. And so even before coming to Kenya, my first trip was to Egypt. Uh, so, yeah, you've been? 
I'm saving Egypt for last. This sounds really awful, okay? <laughs> this sounds really awful and I don't mean it. I feel like Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, that's like the white man's Africa. I feel like that too. So I don't want to go there first, to be honest. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going, I'm actually going to Morocco for my 30th birthday. Are right. you? Yes, um, with my homegirls. But I just like am not pressed to go up there yet. Well, it, it's, you got to do, do your research. It's certain areas where you where it's not so arabic and it's it's, it's a lot of uh, nubians and so when you do go to egypt like uh, sudan uh yeah yeah it's, it's, you know, yeah. it's similar um so when you do go to egypt you know i i definitely say go to luxor you know uh go to cairo you know do the pyramids of giza do all that but then find time to go down swan and when you get out there you'll see the nubians you'll see you see the people that look like us, and, and I didn't. Uh, Do they look like me? They look like you. Okay. And, so, and so when we first got out there, because um, I had my bucket list wasn't too long. Uh, when I when I finally decided I'm gonna do some traveling and and got my passport, things like that, so it was like um, 2017, 2017. And my bucket list I only had two things. I said I wanted to go to see the pyramids, and I wanted to do a safari. Um, That's easy. Well, it, was, well it, it sounds easy now. Well, now that you've been here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been here. <laughs> when you're in Texas, but, it's like... Exactly. And then growing <laughs> up, you know, um, yeah. it's always the idea of um, it's so expensive and it's this. But people go to Miami and spend this money all the time. You know, we do oh, ours. No, and I, no. You know, we, we do it. We go to, we go to Vegas. It's expensive. Uh, it, it depends on how you look at it. Honestly, um, even when I just paid when I went to Ghana, I got an Airbnb. It is expensive. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for and what you need. Um... I mean, personally, I, 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 you know, I'm traveling solo. My expectations aren't really uh, as grand as anybody, as other so people. So why are you traveling solo? Um, honestly, because my friends, uh, I think a lot of them still are caught up on what we heard on the Western side as far as uh, Africans don't like you. It's so expensive. Uh, it's, 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 it's not a place you want to be. It's tore down. Uh, so... They, they just uh, they just have no idea. Even though I've exposed them to a lot, I think it's still the stigma. The stigma, and then most of my friends are married too, and I, you know, pretty much all my friends are married. So why are you not married? Uh, you know, uh, why am I not married? I think that um, for a long time it wasn't just what I was really looking for. I um, I had kids early, so I uh, oh. um, me and my ex, I guess college sweetheart, whatever you want to call it, had children our junior year of college i had braids in my junior year of college Did you? Oh, I, was, I was 21. i was 21. Oh. Cheers, okay. <laughs> no but the crazy yeah. part is he uh. was born on july 9th and mm -hmm. i turned 21 on july 10th in the hospital bed wow my kids were born on july 24th wow yeah, okay yeah. so they're leos though yeah they're leos. me and braising our cancers oh, okay okay yeah, yeah yeah my friends like snuck in a little bottle for me uh, did they? into the maternity ward wow right? yeah they are man they, yeah it really is but uh <laughs> <laughs> but you got good friends though good friends Shout yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah and so um, you were a young I was, parent i was a young parent yeah. and so after that that didn't work out uh i dated for a little bit uh had a serious relationship for a while after that lasted some years and um and we just weren't aligned i um i'm, I'm a very curious spirit i always wanted to travel i always wanted to explore i always wanted to go places um she wasn't she, she we didn't vibe like that and um and so that had an effect on me um and so I, I i didn't i didn't do the things that i wanted to do i didn't i didn't go places i didn't see a lot of things so you feel like you didn't like live in I, your youth I, I didn't i didn't live i didn't live yeah. a lot and so once that um once that didn't work out i just kind of i wasn't so much interested in uh pursuing anything uh, serious or uh, like that until i felt like my kids have, would have to get to a certain age before i can really um what age is that you know back then i just I, I, back then i just i just like okay once my kids graduate high school then i'll look for something you know um but right now let me just work let me supply let me make sure my kids are taken care of um back at, at this time uh, me and my kids mom weren't on good terms uh a lot of issues like that and uh i was listening to dark spot you know yeah. you know and i just uh i just you know i was in a, in a, in, a, in a dark spot and uh for a while um and this but i think then i got an education yeah and then in education uh it kind of um opened some things up for me exposed me to a lot more 
Um, things got better with the situation with my kid's mom. And uh, and so that just, uh, and so that opened up um, some different opportunities for me. Like the, you felt like the road was more clear for you to come. It was, it, it was. cleared up the road. It, it was, I started living for myself again. I started doing okay. the things, I started looking at what I wanted to do. Um, and got back to, to what I want. Initially, before I had kids, my goal was to, I called it country hopping. I said, I want to be a country hopper. That was my, my term, I deemed it. But um, I like that. You like that? And so before I had kids, my goal was to graduate college okay. and to just go to a different country, spend maybe three to six months there, uh, learn the culture, learn the language, really obtain everything. And then, uh, yep. And, yep, just like that. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. That was, that was the goal for my 20s. <laughs> um, had kids. Um, and I mean, and, and I'm sure that it's possible to do that in your 20s, but I started. Um, so how old are you right now? Right now, I'm 36. Okay, you look good. That's nice. Uh, it's, uh, I'm 30, um, I look 36. Yeah, you're young. You're out here. Yeah. Do you plan on... So you plan on moving here permanently? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Are you going to marry an African woman? Uh, it's a possibility that I might. It's a possibility that I might. Or do you have a like, boo thing in Texas who you would bring here? Uh, no, I don't have a boo thing that I, I would bring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a boo thing. Uh, um, when you're out here, what is some of the things that you miss the most about home? Like, what are things that have been hard for you to adjust to in the time that you've spent here? So let's name the countries that you've been to. You've been to Egypt. Just African countries? Yes. Okay, in Africa, I've been to Egypt. I've been to Rwanda, um, Kenya. And I was in Tanzania earlier this year for about three, four months I lived out there. Okay. Well, last year, earlier last year. Give me the one you love the most. Mm. You know, uh, Tanzania is, a, is, is something. You, know, you right? like that? Ooh, what? What made it? Uh, Ooh, man. wee. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, wee. <laughs> what, um, what made you like it? Um, I, I lived in Dar es Salaam, um, so I was right on the coast, and 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 I had this beautiful apartment. It's beautiful apartment, um, brand new, right near the beach. Uh, my view from the window was just immaculate. Okay. And I paid like six hundred a month, and I think it was might have been like wow. Yeah, I paid six hundred bucks a month. It's a two bedroom. It was it was yeah That's nice. yeah furnished. Wow. And yeah, it was nice. And so um, just just being there, um, the people were super receptive. Um, let me see. Just I like nature, so coming outside, seeing the birds, seeing. Uh, and it's and it's, it's beautiful here too, you know. So you'll you'll see you come outside, you'll see avocado trees, you'll see yeah. mango trees. Nairobi is so green. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's so mood lifting. It honestly, is. it truly is. It yeah. is. And uh, but 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 Tanzania. Um, and then the ac I guess the access to Zanzibar too, you yeah. know. So to just go down to the ferry station and get on that boat, I think I might have spent maybe thirty bucks each way. But really? once, yeah. Maybe is it tough getting into Tanzania right now? Did you have to test to get out and in? Um, when I, I went, I, I was in. I went out there February twenty twenty one. You had to get a test to go there. I know it's a little bit different now. I, I think it's it, worse. Are you fully vaccinated? I have a card. Okay. <laughs> I have a card. What <laughs> <laughs> happened to me? <laughs> oh. Bottles. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, but yeah, I have a car. I felt the vibe. <laughs> and so, um, uh, so it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, so now, it, it, I, I, I'm pretty good everywhere I go. But back then, it wasn't required. And okay. so, uh, getting in was pretty easy. Um, yeah. Was it, it the was ladies good. for you? You know what? Um, what did before, you do for fun? Okay, like, before, I know you're not just sitting in your apartment. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> but when I first got there, um, before I left, I was online, you know, utilizing Facebook and, and I was, um, you know, I'm a special ed teacher uh, and I also work, uh, work with special, I work with special needs, but I also work with the homeless too in Dallas. Uh, yeah, I work with the, the youth in, at a homeless shelter. And so with that, before I, before I go, I always have a certain agenda. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure I was, <clears throat> uh, uh oh. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I could I can do I can do more I can I can give while I'm while I'm taking things in I want to make yeah. sure I can give I agree you know just you know 
That's so important. Yes. Yeah, so so I met important. a I met a cool brother. Uh, shout out to Dita, uh, my boy. I be he you know he had, he runs some different organizations out there that works with youth. Works in with Tanzania. In Tanzania. Oh, stop! Uh, I would love to get, become a part of that. Man, I'm looking for I'm something like that down. in Kenya. Solid yeah. brother. Solid brother. And um, he works with uh, empowering uh, different uh, groups as far as uh, women's, young women's, youth. I mean, he, he's on the board of all kinds of different. He's on the board of different. He's on a he's a director on different boards. Uh, he also works with you know the government as well. And so we we began talking. Um, and so I, when I got out before even coming out there, he was like, "Bro, when you come out here, there's a couple of things I want to show you. Want to da 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 da." And I was like, "Cool." Um, God, I think I might have been in a, uh, the same way as we had. We we're in that uh, so WhatsApp group for this, but this is a WhatsApp group as far as. Uh, oh, you're you're in all the groups. I'm in all the groups. You're just in all <laughs> the groups. Yeah, you no, know, and so uh, my group in Tanzania, I became I became I began talking to different people, and it, it might have been a WhatsApp, it might have been on Facebook. I'm not sure how I got involved, but it's another organization out there too that I was working with. So before I came, they knew my background with fitness and. Um, in, in education, and they, and, they, and they asked me if I wanted to go ahead and participate uh, with their group, in, and it was some opportunity to do some things with the TFF Tanzanian Football Federation. Wow. Um, do you think that your visit, your um, physical training, mm -hmm. fitness business, would do well out here? Um, I think that in certain areas it would. In certain areas, um, certain areas that are. are where, where's a little more money? I'm gonna say that. Like Westlands, this area. Yeah. That's I, crazy. Yeah. You know what? He is four minutes away from me. <laughs> Down the street. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> I love that you've been there. Um, I, I've been there, you know, I've been over here for about about a month now in the Westlands. Dang. What do you think of Westlands? Westlands is, is, is cool. It's cool. It's, it's uh, convenient. It's convenient. Uh, you know, Westlands is cool. I was in the uh, Kilimani area. It's a bubble here, though. It seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Before before yeah. I was here, uh, before it's a big bubble. I, before I got here and before I did the Kilimani area, I was off of Tico Road. See, I was gonna say many. I didn't see any white people when I lived over there. Um, Do but, you see a lot of white people in Westlands? Yeah. That's all you see, seriously. Uh, and, and you know, prior to this, I was in Kilimani. Kilimani is is very diverse, mm -hmm. and so Kilimani, you'll see a lot more Asian. Uh, you'll see a lot more white. Um, yeah. Yeah. Does Rwanda have like such a diverse population as Kenya? Uh, Kigali, yes. Kigali yeah. is is uh, is very established, very organized, very clean. Um, so when I was in Kigali, I saw uh, I saw several I saw some Asians, I saw some Caucasians, um, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a few different things. I, I but you know for me. I met some cool brothers in Rwanda, so that's who I was running with. And so they exposed, that. Yeah, so they exposed me to some other things other than... Uh, What's the wildest night you've had here? The wildest night here? Do you in, go in, out yeah. like in Nairobi? Do you hit the clubs? Like, what do you do for fun? Yeah, yeah, see, I'm... You know, like I said, I, I do my, I travel by myself, so I, you know, I, I do everything. You know, I'm good. I'm, I'm comfortable doing things by myself. I don't stay in the house. Yeah. You know, and so... You know, I don't either. You don't? So, have you been to Eastley? No, I think they're, they're they're known for I guess their um, Ethiopian population or yeah, uh, okay, it's like yeah, Somalia, yeah, yeah, Somalia, yeah, uh huh. I like wanted to take one of my friends there, and they were like, no, no, no. They no. don't feel like it's safe. Or what yeah, they okay. felt like it was unsafe. So that's the perk of traveling solo. Yep. You can just like x all that conversation. Exactly. Exactly. So what is the what's your favorite place that you've been in Nairobi? Oh well, I guess like the the wildest time I've had, the, like the yeah, it's, it's, it's probably been New Year's. New Year's out here. I, I just, you know, um, it was fireworks. You know what? It was a fire. Where did you go? Uh, the, uh, I've been everywhere. I mean, uh, see, New Year's. Um, initially, I was staying in the house. Initially, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just chill because I always go out. That's my thing. You know, I, I just get out, I explore, and so you know, going to bars, going to clubs, kind of just that's nothing new. Have you been to Numero Five? What's it called? Numero five. No, I'm not gonna. You're going to old man clubs. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I've um, been to bar next door. B and D bar next door. You know what? I oh I, did. God, I, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. That's okay. It's nature. But no, I, the bar next door. Uh, yeah, I, my the Mithika Road is is some stuff that 
if you, if you, if you want to be, ah, you can be, ah. I've been yeah. to one bar in Tika Road, but I forgot what it's called. So you've been to Bar Next Door. Bar Next Door wasn't that great. When I went, it's uh, always packed, though. It, it was packed, but the music was, you couldn't hear the music when I went. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it just was like, uh, have you been to Ivory? I haven't been to Ivory. I haven't been so, to Ivory. No. so I was chilling in the house. I was, I was comfortable chilling in the house. I just, I just wanted to just chill, um, you know, Why? do my vision board. Because, I mean, I'm... That's what you do. What do you usually do for New Year's at home? Um, the last couple of years, I think I've, I've kind of just been at the... Um, and so this year, because, I mean, it's really not... I get out here and there. It ain't my, you know, I ain't... So what you. dragged you out this year? So I'm at the house. I'm on the phone with my boy back home. And uh, he's like, bro, you need to get out the house. It's, you, you, this is New Year's. You in Kenya. You in Kenya. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm chilling though, man. You got the Netflix. Woo -de -woo -woo. And I really don't even watch TV, honestly. But I was like, yeah, I'm just chilling. You know, I think I might have used the Uber Eats and got some food delivered to the house. So I was just chilling and um he was like, Get out the house, get out the yeah, house. Get out the house. And so um I was like, you know what, man? I just might you right, you right. And so um but it was it was actually I was at the house at twelve o'clock. I was at the house at 12 o'clock. So you went out after the ball. Yeah, about 12.05. I was like, all right, let me throw some clothes out. Where'd you go? Uh, first stop was 40-40. I've never been there. No, it wasn't 40-40. My first stop was, um, I think I might have started at Havana, Havana Line. Havana. I've never been you never there. Havana? It's, 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 it's down the street in West Mass. Let's so, go. Yeah, let's do it. Let you I'm down. Oh, that's a plan. Uh oh. What you doing after this? <laughs> You know, let's, I hit the street. Let's do it. Um, right. <laughs> it's a cool little spot. It's a little, it's a cool little bar. It's a nice little spot to start. Um, uh, that was one of my first spots um, I visited when I got here. I got cool with the bartenders. They showed me love, and they got some pretty decent food. If it's just late and you gotta eat some, and me, I'm I'm meticulous about what do I you eat. Eat um, Naomi Choma. I don't eat meat. Oh yeah, yeah, so damn! Uh, how are you living in Africa and you a vegetarian? See, see, well, I do meat. I mean, I do uh fish. I do fish. A pescatarian. You know, yeah, I'm not big on labels, but yeah, yeah. I'm Kenya. <laughs> Kenya has good fish. Have you had the wet fish? Yeah, the wet the fried whole tilapia? fish. You know, um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, when when I'm on the coast, like so, Mombasa. My, when I first came to Kenya, let me tell you how I went down. My when I first came to Kenya. Um, I, 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 was, I was saying, okay, I'm going to come to Nairobi because that's what you know. You know, you yeah. know where Nairobi. My homegirl, she's from Kenya. Well, she's from uh, Melindi. And she was like, uh, if you're going, you know, you need to Melindi is where okay. it's at. So, uh, and so I flew into Nairobi, spent the first night I got to Nairobi, got to my hotel, uh, found like a little, uh, I was just walking. I'm a wanderer. So I just, I just, I, I just walk. I, I walk. That, I, really. I go anywhere. I walk. And I, you know, and. Uh, He's so, trying to walk here. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Now that's my plan. I have to wait for yeah. I was like, oh! I put my shoes on, and then that's when oh, the rain came down. Yeah, it was raining very hard. Yeah, yeah, out of nowhere. And so, um, and so I, I did my little wandering, and then I ended up in this little section. Um, it, it wasn't. It wasn't anything too pretty, but uh, I just kind of started walking down there. Found like a little spot that was like a little bar. Look like a bar. I'm going to have a shack, but they sold drinks. And so, yeah, I, I just went in there, posted up, uh, you know, had, you know, I guess I guess I got a drink. Fun. Yeah, just, it was, you went in, and a brother met me. Uh, I guess they could tell I wasn't from uh, from out there. And so he was like, after that. I see a lot of Kenyan men with beards. That's what stood out. And my beard back yeah. then was out there. And so they, they would say, oh, you, uh, you, uh, what they call me? They would call me, um. Mizuno? No, no, oh, no, they would, uh, <laughs> no, 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 um, yeah, I don't like that. Rick Ross? No, they, oh, uh, it's, uh, um, um, the, uh, the people that was blowing up stuff, the, um, cook, cook, uh. Al yeah, but, yeah, I don't think they call it, it was the, um. Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Al-Qaeda, you know, let's go, you know, you Al-Qaeda. And so, um. Ended up, you know, brother took me in the back with some old brothers and introduced me to some, you know, some more local cats. And so they, they, they buy, you know, and we, I hear they buy the bottle, you know. So we drinking out the bottle. Oh, Kenyans drink. Yeah, they drink, drink. Yeah. Kenyans drink. Solid Listen, brother. yeah. I'm talking until six in the morning. It don't stop. I, it I don't stop. what time do you go to bed? What uh, time? What time do you clock out of the club? Shh, depending if I'm solo or dolo, if I'm with if I'm with some folks, if I'm with some folks, man, it it don't stop. We're, we're the first club we'll leave maybe about four. Then we'll go to the after hour spot, and then the sun will come up, 
And then I and then I'm like, I, I just want to go home. <laughs> I just want, I just want to go home. And so yeah, I can't keep up with you. Yeah, you gotta, I've got to be in bed by like three thirty or four. I'm I'm pissed. I start getting pit, in a pissy mood. And you know why? And because I'm not fun to be out with. Yeah. Well, see, you see, you on this time zone, so you work, you work um with this time zone. See, when I first got here, I was teaching online, so uh, I would log on at five p.m. because five p.m. Uh, out so here. you were teaching online from Texas here. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So listen, mm -hmm. how was your principal with that? Uh, well, it was a it was a um, this is a virtual. Uh, oh, it was set up. It was, so yeah, it was all, yeah. So next, so, so so after I left all that, I got into I started teaching virtually, okay. and so everything's been online. Oh, okay, so, that's lit. As yeah. long as you wake up, they don't care. Uh, as long as you log on, that's you good. all right. That, yeah, that is good. And so um, I logged on at five p.m. this time, and I would be on from five to about eleven thirty. You know, eleven thirty p.m. Just enough time to hit the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you eat? Do you eat ugali? Yeah, I eat ugali. You like it? Ugali. Have you been to West Africa? No, not yet. You are one of the rare ones because most people start in, yeah, Ghana, with Ghana or Nigeria, Nigeria and then come. You went straight for East Africa. Well, see, yeah, like I told you, like I, uh, I had two goals on my when I first when I when I got this passport. I was like, I'm going to Egypt. And then I'm, to do, I'm gonna see the, I'm gonna see the, okay. uh, the, the see the pyramids. pyramids, and then I'm gonna go on the safari. Okay. And so my, and my, my idea of safari was Kenya. You know. Have you yeah. been on the safari here? Yeah. So how I, was it? It's uh, underwhelming. Depending on where you've been. And now I went. It's fun. Don't get me wrong, what? but I don't get how people do it all day. Um. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, people do like the three night and stuff like that. Uh, I. Well, you know what? Let me tell you. One literally <laughs> four hours is enough. The, yeah, well, it depends. It depends on where you at. Let me tell you, because uh, when I first got, actually when I when I when I went, it had to be it had to be June, late June. I That's think. off season because it's yeah. cold. Yeah, and it's affordable too. Everything's affordable, and so uh, yeah, keep that in mind. See, if you're on a budget, come to Kenya during June, June July, yeah. and August when it's summer. Especially the coast. Especially the coast. Honestly, I just like I. Um, I, I, depending on where I'm at, if I'm in a nice, nice spot, and, and we converse and and, and it's all vibing, yeah, I mean it's a vibe. And if I want to yeah. see you later on, I, I, we we can make that happen. That's nice. And so, uh, and uh, let me let me tell my story. <laughs> and so we was uh, so he picked me up, Melindy, um, and Melindy, like I said, everything was 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 cost effective because it was that season um, at this time. And I and, and my homeboy explained, oh, and so I'm at the bread and breakfast. And um, the guy who's working there's like a pool boy, and it's some it's some the guys that cook, and, and they just some cool fellas. So we they they like you know what let's take you want to go to the village, and I'm like yeah, and so we hop on the back of a, a boater boater, and we gone, you know, and so they take me to the village. I meet other other people. I love that for and, you. You know, it, it was it was something, you know, and I in my whole mindset, I'm thinking, my this whole time here, I, you know, it was like this. It's a good thing I came by myself. Because yeah. I, got, I got good people around me back home, but they're very reserved. Yeah. And, and certain things um, can be something there. I'm like, man, if I would have came with whoever, these, these are the things that I would have missed out. No, and no, I would I would have been in a in a you know a five star hotel, and we would have you know been you know you know. Just, Do you plan on bringing your kids? You know, yes. I, I initially supposed to bring my kids uh, last summer. Uh, things didn't pan out so much, and they were supposed to come. Actually, we're coming. How old are they now? They're fifteen. Okay, they're both. fifteen. Yeah, okay. they're both fifteen twins. And so, uh, you know, and so we're supposed to come bring them back uh, this summer. Okay. And so, a friend of their mom is from Kenya, and she was like, you know, it's the elections going on at that time, and it might be dangerous. Da 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 da. da. And so, um, yeah, so we're gonna do something else this summer. Yeah. But um, I'm thinking Tanzania. I'm thinking uh, might do the West. It might be the Listen, chance. You gotta go. It you might be go. the chance. Go, time go, that go we to Ghana. Go to Ghana. You know, see, see, see. The thing is that I don't like going places that everybody else, you know, goes. You are black American. Yeah, I know. And, 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 um, that, you give me Nigerian. That's what everybody says. Out here, they say, "Oh, you're Nigerian." Yeah, you look but, Nigerian. But, but see, but see. <laughs> And I don't have a problem with it because you know a lot of my homies back home in Nigeria. You know a lot of my homies, and so. But I will say I'm be honest with you. When I'm abroad, it's a certain perception of Nigerians that um, I get a lot of times that's not so pleasant. What you know, have you discovered about yourself as an African American mm -hmm. living your life in Africa? 
Africa right now? What has what have you like self reflected on, or like anything that you've learned about yourself as an African American? Um, as an African American, um, or any or, or as an American period, like what has just made you has anything like hmm, about yourself? Um, you know, I've been initially when I got here. Um, so I, my first time in Kenya, it was a little different in Egypt, but when I got to Kenya in 2019, um, you know what, I guess, uh, being, being a man out here, being a, a black man out here and coming from the States, you know, from the States, I, I realized that I was on, on defense a lot. Uh, when I first got out here, um, you know, brothers would smile at me. And, you know, and, and want to, you know, shake my hand and, and, and it just, you know, and, and every real Aren't they kind of touchy? Touchy, 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 touchy. Yeah, touchy. Yeah, 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 I had a friend come out here and he was like, why these niggas keep yeah, touching yeah, me? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that was the first thing. I was like, yeah, like, hold up. This is kind of, you know what I'm saying? And, and seeing other, you know, you're not used to brothers just, you know, you do the what's up, whatever like that. You know, <laughs> a little but, dab. But, but to see somebody smile at you and all that, it's like, hold up. Are you trying to rob me? Or, or he might be on some, you know, whatever it might be. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't in that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, but after after being here a couple of days and, real, and realizing that, you know, that's how they greet you and people are happy to see you and it's very endearing, you know, for brothers. It's to genuine. Do that. It's genuine, you know. Yeah. It, you know, it's not no kind of whatever. And, you know, not against whatever, but it just, you no know. No funny business. Yeah, yeah. It's just all, you know, it's all real love. And um, that, it, it had to be, that's when I had to self-reflect and be like, okay, you know, this conditioning that the state has done to me where I have to be defensive or have to, um, Second guess, yeah, people's yeah, intentions. Yeah, like, like, like I, I shouldn't have to, like, like I shouldn't, I should be able like to. You're hardened to affection yeah. from other black men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a whoa, a very uncomfortable. Yeah, setting. yeah, yeah. Aww. And so that was, I guess that was that would be the most profound, um, most profound um, reflection, reflection, self reflection, self reflection that, I, that I've, I've, I've come yeah. across. But. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was a little different first getting here, and not and not knowing how to to accept that, you know. Oh, and then you know the whole motorbike stuff, you know. Like at first, I was like, I'm not hopping on the back of no motorbike you or need no. A yeah, 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 I'm not hopping on the motorbike. Back of, you know, and, and my boy from the uh, from the bed and breakfast that was, um, I guess, the pool boy. Whatever, he did everything that he was like, man, it's okay. And I was like, I don't know about that. Just call a car. No, get on the motor. And I was like, right. and then so I got on, and he got behind me. Oh man, it's two of three of us. No, 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 no. It's, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah, yeah, you know what? And, and so uh, you hold their waist. I don't hold nobody's waist. I don't hold <laughs> so nobody. So if you're in the middle, what do you do? Your arms are free. My hands are down here. That's my hands. No. Are here. I hold. I hold onto them like. I oh hold no, their no, waist. no! I ain't holding nobody. And now, because I'm like, if I go down, <laughs> your black ass is no, going no, down. No, we both going down. So not, I hold tight. Yeah. As my boat drive. And now, I, that was like the one time. I would do, you know, with, I would ride around, you know, three deep on them. It was just, we, we, it was free, and and and, and then I felt come, you know, it was in my the homeboy in the back. He was cool as a fan. And it just, Listen, uh, you don't have to explain uh, yourself. I gotta explain You're myself. following no, into that American thing now. It, it, I am because Americans gonna see this, no. and so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's not. It's it's a cultural norm. It's a cultural norm. And Literally. So, and that was like the first time, only time that I've written, uh, really written three D. Other than that, uh, it's just me and the driver. And with that. Um, normally, what I do, I hold, I have at least one hand on the on the little little metal piece on the back like on this. The back. Oh, like yeah, this. because because yeah. they drive crazy out here. They it's drive crazy. crazy, and so my mindset is do always. You, have you driven out here? Uh, I've driven in Tanzania. Okay, I've driven in Tanzania. Uh, I haven't driven uh, out here in Kenya yet. I drive. I had to get a new car. Did you? What? My oh. first car was too big, and I I this is so embarrassing. I hit two people. That makes sense, yeah, because they drive wild. They be, no, they mm -hmm. be walking in the street. Oh, you hit a pedestrian. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all. Uh, did you keep on driving or did you? No, I did you not be, keep no. on driving. But for, you to, for you to wreck your car, you had to hit them pretty hard, right? No, 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 I didn't wreck my car. I got rid of my car because it was too big. Oh, okay. But um, they forgave me <laughs> both times. Oh, man. Well, you know what? They be in the street. We do. And let me tell you, that's one thing I, I learned, too, the first trip uh, out here. I tried to, I was like, okay, the car's coming. I was trying to run it. And home was like, no, no, no. Hakuna. Uh, Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. We, we, we don't run. We don't run. Oh, that's a dang lie. Yeah. Because they just run. Yeah, but, but. If you're at a roundabout, you're like fighting for your life. 
I don't run no more. And so, so, so with that, I just go. I just walk. Oh, you don't run in the street? No, nope, That's I, good. Don't. It's very dangerous. Yeah, because I, I, at first it's I was trying dangerous. to just wait to the, and he was like, no, 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 we're going to walk. You and stay out school lane. I, yeah, this is my first time really on this section. I this think. road is very dangerous. I can imagine. I, this right here is, can I run to the restroom? Yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> been things that you think people need to know before coming to Nairobi. Uh, before coming to Nairobi, um, it's what you make it. I think perspective is everything. Uh, definitely, you got to be open minded. You got to be open minded. So I'll just buy. Would about, you teach at a local school here? Yeah, I would. Really? For uh, local pay? I, I don't know what local pay is. <laughs> I don't know what local pay you is. Would, you would get uh, local pay and live like a Kenyan. I, a lot of kids. Would you I, be I, I see, able to? I, I, see, I see Benzes. An average Kenyan. An average Kenyan. You know, Listen, there's rich Kenyans. Man, Listen, man, I don't mean I don't mean like a Kenyan, but as an average trucks, Kenyan, just right? like an average American, I tell people all the time, yeah. I'm spoiled here, yeah. which is why I may never leave. I'm. In, I don't know if I could reverse myself. Um, you know. But would you come here? Like, say you couldn't get like an expat job but you still want to live in Africa, would you just work a normal job? No. Uh, I, I wouldn't work a normal job just because um, it, it's just, it's, it's, cause right now we're, we're, I'm in a place where I can, I can make that money online. Now what I would do, Team. what I, I would do is I would work online, you know, like I said, the evening time is, is from that five to whatever in the evening time, but I would uh, definitely do some volunteer work out here or I definitely create something where I can be an asset to my environment. Okay. Now, as far as depending on that local income, no, I wouldn't do that, okay. not at all. But um, from the money that I can make online, that US money, I can definitely open up something out here. I can definitely volunteer. I can definitely do so How much. How long were you teaching in Texas? How long have I? Were you teaching in Texas? Oh, I, I began teaching in Texas in 2013. Okay, so how many years did you have when you left? Um, when, when I left, um, like seven. Yeah, about seven. You ever miss home when you're here? You'd be like, oh, I'm ready to go home. I I, I miss I miss I miss family. That's about it. That's uh, it. I miss family. Um, but honestly, um, through through technology, I'm able to communicate quite often. Uh, the, what, what I think I think what what affects me the most is that I can't. They can't experience this with me, or they're or they're not willing to at times experience. And I'm like, so it's it's it's, it's um that's that's the that's the biggest thing for me. Like I'm experiencing all all of this, you know. I'm I, sh the, to me this is paradise, you know. Especially yeah. when I was in Tanzania on the coast and just living a certain type of lifestyle. I, I ate a certain way. I mean, just to, to come yeah. out, it's just it's best just, pescatarian life. It's, it, yeah, exactly, and yeah. it's like I, I want, like it's like I need, I need people to see other people's on a boat. It's a, it's a bring your deck. own bottle. Bring your own, yeah, you could bring your own bottle or, or bring your own. You know, if you went to, you know, herbal things. Is weed things. legal in Tanzania? Uh, I, I don't think it's legal in Tanzania. You know, but, shisha is technically illegal in Kenya, but they yeah. shisha everywhere. Oh, is it? Yeah, out here, you know, we, they, they call uh, they call the weed bangi. And so, uh, you well, let me tell you this: if you come, if you don't know, if you say, oh, well, "I gotta have this," they got everything you want out of here, brother. They got everything they want out here, sister. And so, if you if you were smoking, got to have your your reefer. Yeah. Who's gonna develop the cannabis industry here? Well, you know what, South Africa has has has, has a, uh, I think it's legalized it now. And they have dispensaries. Wow. And so if you so yeah, so if you're looking to invest in things like that, South Africa might be the route to go. And uh, it might be easy to get into the industry out there. And also, I think South Africa makes it easy for people to um, relocate and also to get residency and things like that, too. Um, so South Africa was how I felt, the way I felt about South Africa is how you felt about Egypt. How it might have been, you know, the oh, white man. Yeah. I'm not stuff. interested in living in South Africa. I don't want to be, yeah, but, but I met some brothers. I want to visit. Stuff. I met some people from out there. You love it. Well, I haven't, I, I haven't been there yet. I heard Jaber is very, very dangerous. I saw the shows on TV. But <laughs> people say the same thing about Nairobi. Three things that you love about Kenyan women. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Kenyan women. Um, I like the... Okay. Um, as far as culture-wise, they're very engaged with you know their culture, knowing who they are, uh, family-oriented. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's just one thing in itself. 
the second thing is um, uh, I like natural women. And, and I'm not saying that a lot of women out here aren't. Like hair? I like natural hair. You Real know, lashes. I like I like those type of things. And, and Real nails. I like those things. I feel like men say they like all that, but then you're lusting for girls who don't have that. See, see, that's the thing. I'm in Africa, though. You know, if, if I wanted all those things, you know, I could find that in the States easy. There's a lot of girls here in Kenya who, have, who have that, though. Yeah, they like have, the fake hair and the whatever, they whatever. And stuff. they're probably but great you're women. saying you're lusting after. Oh, well, I'm not lusting. You know, I, I just, you know. Um, I'm not thirsty lust. Yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like a woman who can appreciate her own, uh, mm. own beauty, you know. Like you require real hair. <laughs> I, you know, I, I like I like I like real hair. It, you consider it, this natural? Yeah, I, I like you know braids are cool. I, I'm braids all okay. day. You know, <laughs> um, I'm not big on wigs and per not knocking wigs and perms and things like that. That's cool. This is a safe space. You yeah, can knock it. Yeah, yeah, you know that's not my thing. You're but not into the lace front baby edge. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I saw someone online and somebody tattooed the baby. You yeah, somebody, somebody you're not into the glue. Your edges I, down. I, I'm not. I'm not, good, bro. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm like. I'm, I'm into something. I want to know. I like when I when I wake up to you, you the same woman that you know I see in the evening, and so um, <laughs> that that's just what I like. I like I like straight hair, I like kinky hair. I just like real hair. You know, if it, it doesn't matter how it is. If, if if it's yours and you know how to you know work it, that's cool. What um, about no hair? Yeah, you know. It's, you like bald girls? Like how bald? You talking like my like, bald? Like a buzz talking? cut? You know what? I think that. You can make that. You can make that sexy. If you got a buzz cut and, 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 you, got, and you got the earrings and you got a decent and a decent pair of as earrings, as long as you're feminizing yourself. Yeah, yeah. You take care of your health and all that shit. It's sexy, you know. Do you uh, date fat women? Uh, what's see, what's what's considered fat? You date large women. What's considered large? Like large. Uh, I, I like I like. You're a trainer, so I'm just asking. I like shapely women. I like shapely women. I like thin women. Um, you love them all. Yeah, I like shapely women, but see, see, see. As far as um, like, it's, it's a certain, it's a certain size that I'm, I'm more comfortable with. Three hundred pounds. Uh, three hundred is kind of heavy for me. You know, three hundred okay. kind of heavy. For um, me. You know? so we went to the two things you love about Kenny women. What's the okay? Third? The third one. Uh, let me say, African women. You know, it, okay. It, um, yeah, let's broaden it out. Yeah, as far as in Africa, I, it's not. I, I haven't had a lot of. Um, and me and my boy talk about this a lot too. Oh, spill yeah. the spill the group man tea. I think that a lot of times, not all African American women. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all, but a lot of times don't don't come heavy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, and, and African brothers, we all African American brothers, we all have a lot of trauma that is uh is seeded from the past that we don't analyze and we don't uh, try to dig into. And, and, and that y'all have inflicted upon African American women. Well, I would say that the that. It's all given to us from our oppressor a lot of times, and we and we don't even know how to address it. And with that, and with that, in certain media, we just stuff just goes around, and we accept things, you know. So we don't resolve a lot of thing issues that we have, and so this trauma affects us in how we perceive each other, and then you know, it's a black man versus black woman, exactly. A black American man versus black American woman, exactly. And so you're in defense. I'm in defense. I'm insecure and don't know it. You're insecure and don't know it. And you, don't know it. And then, and then, it's and you feel like you don't get that from African women. Well, you know, um, that's obviously how I feel about African men. Yeah, and I tell my home it's girls, lighter. I tell my it's home just girls, like, lighter. Yeah, honestly. yeah, yeah. I'm not even joking. It's, like it's black certain, men, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a certain insecurity that we don't it's, even yeah. know we carry around. It's just like. Things I don't even have to think of if yeah. I'm dating an African. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because we as black Americans come with so much it's, psychological it's a lot damage. Of, it's a lot of trauma that we colonization, yeah. texturism, colorism, mm -hmm. expectation of income, yeah. generation. It's, it's the list just goes on and on. Yeah, exactly. And it makes it very hard. It's like your relationship is doomed from the beginning if you don't have certain things. And like, mm -hmm. there really truly is. And I understand that you have a lighter load emotionally exactly when you are dealing with someone who's secure in their identity yeah. as a foundation to their personality definitely definitely because uh, you know in, in america if they do this this means this if they, i have to think i have to think three steps ahead and i have to be da -da -da, and, da -da -da, and if this means that means that and then it's just it's just it's just things that i don't even have to you know it's yeah. just, just, it's just you know. a lot of african men have told me that i i talk too much though 
you know what? In, in dating African women, I felt like I've talked too much because I, I, you know, I get to go and da 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 da. I'm like, you know what? Hold on, hold on. I, am I talking too much? And they, like, no, no. And I'm like, no, no. no. I am. I, I am. am. I don't like, like, you know, what you got going on? You know. And so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a little bit different. But the strong black woman that us black women are used to being in America mm -hmm. is not really praised in this type of arena. Yeah, and we say strong, then what, what defines a strong black woman, you know? Like super independent, super opinionated, super, I don't need you, so if you're gonna do, you know what I'm saying, that type of attitude. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's, a, it, it's just a different vibe Yeah. Um, yeah. of what? a lot of people culturally here expect. I met people, met Africans who's, who let me know that, you know, well, you know, we, we see you like, you know, you're just Muslim, you just like the, you know, we see you Just like white people? Yeah, we see you as the same. And, and, and for me, uh, initially, I didn't know how to take that, you know, because I'm like- They don't people, identify you as a brother. Because, because the white people, when, we, when, when African Americans view white people, we think of- other our experiences with white people our history of white people and over here uh it's been different because they haven't been colon well it's, it's not they've been colonized, they've been colonized but it wasn't but like slavery it was slavery, it was slavery. Yeah, exactly. and yeah. all that and, and so and so they don't have those same kind of things and then when they, when, when the white people do come here um the, it's, it's, it's perceived a little different you know in certain aid and certain things are are and, and you yeah. know what another thing is too yeah, uh, when I was um, so I, I went on safari when I first got here to Savo East. That was cool. In Tanzania, I went to uh, Bagamoya. I went to Saadani, and I did a little safari there. And that, that safari wasn't that great. I but, went to Ambalisi, and it was okay. Ambalisi, I think I heard of that. I, uh, it's right, literally outside of Tanzania. Mm, yeah. It wasn't that great. Nah. And see, and see, when I when I first I did an overnight in uh, Saadani, and so when I got there, I went. There's a restaurant there. I went there, and when I was coming in to the restaurant. It was uh, some white people leaving, older white people leaving, and the white people was leaving. They said, "Oh, Santi," and they was like, "Oh, Santi." The black, the staff was, "Oh, Santi!" And all that. And I was coming in. I was, you know, and I was, you know, what I say, my boy. They was like, "Oh, hey," you know. And so for me, and I was like, "Oh, oh, oh I want that same, that same energy you gave them." You know, I want that same energy you gave them. And and for me. Cause I, I talk a little shit everywhere I go. That's what I do. So so you know I have to fun. be honest. It's yeah. not even talking shit. Was, be honest. Yeah, like hey, hey, y'all hey, gonna do all that for them to do that for me? Jump and dance for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 I probably tip more. Real talk. You know. And so I had to analyze that. You know, for a while, and and and, and just and I realized that um, they come and they spend money. Um, Black Americans. I don't think we come as much as they do. We barely do. come. We barely come. So when they do perceive us, that this is what we give them off of. Because we, we have to understand our influence too. Black Americans really have to understand our influence through media, the things we put out there. Because when they do see us, you know, it's not always the, the best. It's gang banging. Yeah, it's gang banging. Love and hip hop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 42 dog, dog food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I, I can't be upset. Heartbeat of black Americans. It, it really is. It really, <laughs> it is. really yeah. no one wants you. Yeah. yeah. And that's Essentially. How I feel. And that's how I feel. No one wants you. It's very hard. It, it know, truly is hard. And, and I've come across, but, you know, not to not to negate, you know, or or, or not recognize the folks who um, who have, who are more, you know, educated. When a lot of Kenyans are super loving. Yeah, they are. They In Tanzania, yeah. it's, a lot, it's a lot of folks who... Who, who do know Americans or who understand what we've been through. But at the same time, our plight has not been uh, uh, instilled in certain education. You know, even when I talk to f uh, folks from the UK, they're like, you know, hey, we, we, we didn't learn, we don't know nothing about, you know, uh, we didn't learn about uh, slavery, slavery and stuff like that. Slave you, trade. You know, yeah, I mean, a, most Americans don't even. Yeah, and, and right now, you know, the education system, it's, Critical race theory. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I'm a different kind of teacher. And that's, and that's one reason that I've, I, I enjoyed. Before I got into SPED, I, I taught second grade the longest. Um, oh, that is so sweet. Second grade is cool. Stop. And the reason second grade is cool is because it's not a testing grade. Third yeah. grade, we needed a testing, you know. Yeah. And so second grade, uh, I had a cool principal. I was always, I worked, you know, in the hood or whatever like that. So I worked among us. So um, I, would, I would teach the curriculum, 
but I also teach what I thought Sprinkle was. Sprinkle a little extra. Yeah, I would, I would say, okay, this is cool, this is cool, all right, all right, math, math, you know, social studies, all right, Marcus Garvey, you know, yeah. you know, I would do, and that's why I, I, would, I would, I would teach things I love that, that, you know, I would teach yeah. things that I thought was important, and my, and my principal would come in, and as long as I can incorporate, you know, the reading with yeah. it or the writing, make, make it make sense, make it make sense. Yeah. She was cool with it. You That's know, real. and That's so real. I think I think it's, it's it's definitely necessary that you know African American teachers, you know, instill things outside of the uh, curriculum. You know, that's important yeah. to us because right now critical thinking is um, it's critical, critical race theory is crazy right now. Yeah, critical race theory, critical thinking, thinking for yourself, being able to uh, know your history and being able to apply it is 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 is. is it's, it's essential. It's essential. Made it happen. Yeah. I'm thinking about opening up a soul food restaurant here. What do you think? I don't eat meat, so as long as there ain't no you know, neck bones and all that, it's cool. I'd go to the store about once a week, and I would get all the vegetables I could find, just different things, variety. Variety is really where you can, can excel with it. So I get my mushrooms, I get my peppers, I get my jalapenos. I, oh, I love that you, for you. You know, I'd have it. I'd have the onions. I'd have my spinach. Do you do the same thing out here? Uh, out here, I don't. You know, I don't. Uh, what do you I, eat mostly here? Uh, here, as a vegetarian vegan uh, what, what, in Africa. Well, you know, I do a lot of fish. I, I do the fish. I do. I do the fish. I do the cabbage or the greens. Uh, I'm, a, oh. I'm, a, I'm a sucker for good chapati. Yeah, oh my no, god, yeah, chapati is so fat. Man, I know. I you know. You do mandazi? No, I don't know what that is. What is mandazi? It's like the puff. Pastry. Oh yeah, I don't do all this stuff. Yeah. No, I I um I do uh jingo, oh, jingo. I do a little coconut beans. I do um, but for the most part, and I, I see the juice is where I really focus on. But for the most part, I, I like um. The fruit is very cheap here. It, it it can be. It can be. Unless it's strawberries. Well, yeah, it's the, I, can, I gotta show you my strawberries after this interview. With, see, see, and fruit too. They, they this. Have, Little my strawberries. those are real strawberries, then it's crazy. Those are real strawberries. When They're you look at strong. organic versus you know, non organic, you know, you used to in the states, you used to you know, big old bananas, and then when you when you realize what bananas supposed to be like, it's like, crazy, it's crazy, you it's know. Crazy. But you know, it's also like I say, I've been out here, you can do things however you want to. You can, you can, you can be out here and spend more money you spend in the states, or you can be out here like that's me, true. And you can go to the, the market on the street, you have to make conscious choices, yeah. On the street. You know what really fucked me up? Hmm. One dollar guacamole. Yeah, especially being protected. We're so gonna... conditioned yeah. to make avocados very expensive. Yep. Oh, man. So when I was like... Man, I'm telling you. Avocado, how much? Mm -hmm. Avocados Big are like avocado luxury. Too. Yeah. It's been really nice to hang out with you guys. It's been really fun. Um, he's awesome. As an American, you get scared. You may, I don't know if I want to lose my job. I don't know if like my kids are going to miss me, but you got to make a move sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy, but it's always worth it. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is I always tell people, you know what? You can take your black ass home. Anytime. That's it. If Anytime. it's not working out, just take your black ass home. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you guys for watching.